Hey guys, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. In this video, we are going to talk about 10 things that will shock you about the USA. Now, some of you have never been to the USA before, but others of you live here, and I am from the USA, so all of this stuff is completely normal to me. But when I talk with my friends and people that I know that traveled and visited the USA for the first time, they go, oh my gosh, Stephanie, I experienced so much culture shock. There were so many things that were different from where I'm from. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about in this video today. Now, a lot of this stuff is actually gonna be about observations that my husband made because he is from Argentina originally. And when he came to the USA for the first time four years ago, he made some really interesting and funny observations. So I wanna share that with you guys. And in another video, I'll tell you about some of the observations I made in Argentina about how that country and culture was different from what I knew in the USA, okay? Now, before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my website, of course. So I will include the links in the description and I hope you join me there as well. Okay, let's get into it. Number one of 10 things that will shock you in the USA, toilet paper. I know this sounds really silly and crazy, but when my husband came here, one of the first places we went was to my sister's house. And I remember he came out of the bathroom and he was like, oh my gosh, the toilet paper was so soft. It was like a blanket. And I was just looking at him like, okay. Like to me, that was just normal. And then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, you know, when we were in Argentina, the toilet paper wasn't as thin thick, I guess, okay? But in the US, we actually have a couple words for the kind of toilet paper that we use because a lot of it is really soft. I mean, depending on how much money you spend on your toilet paper or what brand you get or what quality you want, you can get like really cheap, thin toilet paper or you can get the other kind that's so thick and it's like a blanket, okay? So the kind that's like a blanket, we call it quilted, okay? A quilt is a type of blanket. You can Google a picture of that if you wanna see what quilts look like, but basically they call it quilted toilet paper or they might call it something like two-ply. Two-ply just means that there are actually two pieces of paper that are put together um, to make that toilet paper extra soft, okay? All right, the next thing that will probably shock you about the USA is that the food here is extremely sweet. Now, this is not a good thing in my opinion because it just means that there's a ton of sugar and unnatural products used in our food to sweeten the food. But again, my husband made this observation when he came here, he made a sandwich, he bit into his sandwich and he was just like, whoa, why is this bread sweet? Like it almost tasted like dessert to him or something, but it was actually marketed as regular sandwich bread, right? And you'd, you don't really normally think of bread that you use for sandwiches as being sweet, but Anyhow, that's one of the problems he has with the bread here is that it's completely sweet. And you'll just notice that in all kinds of food too. It's not just bread, it's also meat. It's also the sauce we put on our food dishes. They're just, there is just so much sugar in the food. And also there's a lot of obesity in the USA. So that's not even on the list, but that's another thing that might shock you when you come here and you see the size of people. Okay, the next thing that will probably shock you about the USA is that the cars here, there's such a variety, okay? You can go down the street and see a Corvette here, a really unique car there. Okay, I just, full disclaimer, I'm not a car person. I don't know the name of names of cars. I'm like a Corvette, a Mustang, but the way I talk about cars, I'm like, oh, that's a cute blue car. That's a really awesome red car. The way I distinguish cars is if it's a van or a pickup or a, like a four door car, a sports car, that's kind of like my terminology for cars is limited. But if you're a person that's really into cars, you're gonna love driving down the freeway and seeing all the different cars that are here, okay? Because there's just such a huge variety. And I remember when I went to Argentina and I was like, okay, so there's like five kinds of cars here. <laughs> I mean, there's more than that, but because I was so used to seeing such a wide variety here in the USA, when I went to Argentina, it just seemed like everything was all the same, okay? So 
I don't mean any offense by that, obviously. These are just observations. Next, number five. In the USA, you can do almost anything over the phone. You can make an appointment, book an appointment, you know, call a store and make a request, put an order in, ask about something, or send an email. But it's more common to just book things online. Like you can get a pizza delivered to your door just by requesting one online. You don't even have to call anymore. But the reason why I'm saying this is because in so many countries that I've traveled to, if you wanna talk with a banker or something like that, you actually have to go to the bank, stand in line, wait your turn, ask your question, talk to the person about it, get the information that you need, and then you go home. In the US, we just don't wanna waste any time going anywhere and asking questions when we can just you know, use the technology that we have to get the information that we need. Okay, number six, the next thing that might shock you about the USA is that a lot of the bathrooms here are automated. I mean, everything is automated. The toilet flushes on its own. You have to put your hand under the soap dispenser and it will pop out a little bit of soap for you. Then you wash your hands and then you put your hands under the faucet and then the water comes on automatically. And then you can either put your hands in a drying machine what are these called, hand dryers? Okay, you can put your hands in one of those or under one and it's all automated. It's like you don't have to touch anything. And maybe that just represents that in our culture we're germaphobes, <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe people are just you know trying to be more hygienic. But this is really interesting, although it can be frustrating when something's not working because you're like, what's wrong with the machine? You're putting your hand in, you're putting it out, you're putting it in, you're putting it out. And then as soon as you take it out, then the soap falls, but it doesn't fall on your hand. So it can be really frustrating frustrating and I guess I'm gonna have to talk a lot about Ren in this video my husband because he's just the one that you know shared all these observations with me and gave me these funny stories but the first time he used a bathroom like that and realized that he could just wave his hand in front of one of the machines that, that would roll out the paper towel for him to dry his hands he was just like whoa it's so cool now i know there are plenty of countries around the world that are also you know advanced in this department but Plenty of them aren't, okay? So some of you guys might find this very interesting. And if you visit the USA and it's not like this in your country, then you'll probably find it shocking. Okay, number seven, something else that will shock you about the USA is our measuring system. Our system frustrates so many people around the world because we measure length in stuff like feet and inches and then we use Fahrenheit. And it's just so confusing because the rest of the world is using the metric system, which it's a great system, you know? You, you base it on the number 10, everything's really easy to understand. And in the US, we're still stuck on this other system. If you grow up with our system, it's perfect. It makes sense, it's great. And for us, when we travel to your country and you're on the metric system, we're like, no, I don't understand. But the same thing happens to you when you come over here and you're just like, okay, it's gonna be 80 degrees today. Well, is that hot? Is that cold? What does 80 degrees even feel like, right? Because you're used to maybe 40 degrees Celsius being really hot. Anyways, number eight, another thing that will probably shock you about the USA is just the sheer amount of multicultural people that we have living here. There are just so many people living here from all over the world. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why you can live in the USA and almost never have to speak English because there are subcultures that have formed within the community for Russian speakers, for Spanish speakers, for Chinese speakers. And there are stores that are owned by people of these nationalities and you can go to these stores and you can buy you know, the Russian food that you're used to buying where you live or the Mexican food or whatever it is and you can talk with them in your language and you can do so many things without needing English. Also, if you ever make calls on an automated phone system, they might ask you, oh, do you want this call in a different language? If you want it in Spanish, press two. If you want it in this language, press this or whatever. So we have just a lot of people here living from so many different cultures. And um, some of my students, they say, hey, Stephanie, I'm going to the USA, but I'm gonna try my best to avoid Brazilians because I'm, I'm going there to practice English, or I'm gonna try to avoid Spanish speakers, French speakers, whatever it is, because I don't want to 
speak my language. I'm going to the USA to practice English. Since there are so many people here from different cultures, if someone sees that you're here trying to speak English and practice, but they can hear your accent, they're like, oh, they speak Spanish, so do I. They might just speak to you in Spanish because it's easier and you might get frustrated and go, no, I don't want to speak Spanish. I'm here to practice my English. So anyhow, if that happens, just you know, stick with English and say, no, it's okay. I'm here to practice my English and they'll change back for you. Okay, number nine, traffic laws in the USA are very strict. And when I say very strict, I mean, you better know what the laws are before you start driving on the streets so you don't get a ticket, okay? You have to stop fully at the stop sign, wait three seconds before you start going. You can't tailgate people, you can't drive too closely, you can't roll up slowly to a stoplight just because it's red and you're trying to save momentum in your car. I mean, that's what my husband does. And I'm like, no, just drive up to the stoplight, stop, okay, wait. And then when it's green, then you can go. And he's like, but if that's not fuel efficient. I'm like, hey, you know what, like, we can't. We can, You just have to follow the rules. You just have to drive how people drive here. And I know in other countries, because I've been to plenty of them, that people drive differently all over the world. Some of you guys drive really crazy, okay? But in the US, just take it slowly, be calm. There will be that crazy guy every now and then that'll cut you off or whatever, but don't give him the middle finger unless you want to practice your curse words in English, you know, <laughs> but just take it slowly. Know that the traffic laws here are really strict and just read up on what they are before you come. Okay, the last thing that will probably shock you in the USA is that everything is big. Things are just big here. I mean, the country itself is pretty big, right? It's pretty enormous. The people, we already talked about it. We've got our obesity problem, so some of us are big also. Cars are bigger. The lanes that the cars drive in, the roads are bigger. Food portions are enormous. They're like offensive, practically. You go out somewhere for lunch and they give you enough food for like three people. Everything is just really big in the USA. From the cars, the lanes, the houses, the people, the the land itself, you'll just notice that quantities and portions are large. So anyhow, what I wanna know from you guys now is, have you ever been to the USA? And if you have, how was it different from your country? How are things done differently? How are the people different? What did you like? What did you not like? Okay, feel free to share your experiences. Also, if you've been living here for a while, then think back to when you first came. What did you find shocking? Because by now you're probably used to everything. All right, so let's have an awesome discussion about this in the comments. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. And if you aren't already a subscriber on my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get more of my videos. Also, if you are interested in practicing your English with native English speakers and meeting us online on social media, Facebook, Instagram, etc., go ahead and download the guide that I have linked in the description, okay? It's a simple guide on how to practice your English with native speakers, and I'm sure you're gonna find it really helpful. That's it, you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.